So we talked about how we can move big things in and or small things in and out of the cell, but what about really big things? We're going to have to use these two other methods. One's called exocytosis, so this is moving stuff out of the cell, and one is going to call endocytosis, which is moving stuff in the cell. Basically, both methods use the same sort of thing, but let's do it with exocytosis first. First thing that happens is we create a lipid bilayer, so this is going to be a vacuole. This vacuole could have been created by the Golgi apparatus, it could be created by the um, smooth ER, but basically what happens is this lipid bilayer is created a, around something that it wants to transport. And when it goes to the outer membrane, it's going to sort of merge with it and release all of that material outside the cell. So this is how we make and distribute hormones outside of our, our cells into our bloodstream. So let's say this is a cell. It decided that it has to make a whole bunch of hormones because it got a message from some homeostatic pathway. It's going to merge to that lipid bilayer open up and let all of that material out and then eventually this can get reincorporated back inside the cell. And we have to do this because if we just opened a big giant hole in the lipid bilayer and just let the stuff leave, we have a bunch of things that could go wrong. Number one is really important stuff inside the cell could just float away. Number two, viruses, bacteria, parasites, they all want to get inside of our cell. So by having this hole, basically it's going to allow them to come in and um, infect us and cause us problems. Um, plus, we might have stuff that we've put out into the bloodstream that's going to get in, and that'll become a big problem. So all the cells put their waste products into the bloodstream, and if we open this up, that's going to be a major problem. The things that we could do to bring stuff into the cell is going to be three different types. There's phagocytosis, pineocytosis, and cell receptor mediated endocytosis. And phago means cell eating. Pineo, pineo reminds me of Pinot Grigio, the, the alcohol, the wine. So that's what reminds me of cell drinking. And pineo actually means drinking. And then the last one is a receptor mediated endocytosis cytosis. Let's look at those. So the first method is we have something on the outside of the cell that we want to bring in. So how the cells of like let's say our spleen work, our spleen look for old red blood cells and bring them into the body. So what they're going to do is they're going to surround a red blood cell. So let's say this is an older one. It'll bring it in and it brings it in through this vacuole. Again it does this because it wants to open up that hole. Number one and then number two, it um, wants to make sure that no viruses and stuff come in. So it's controlling what comes in, and then it's going to screen this area to make sure it's safe and then let it inside the cell. Pineocytosis, this could be a whole bunch of hormones on the outside of the cell. So the cell realizes there's hormones or sugar or something, a solute. It's going to make this little vacuole and bring it inside the cell. And when it brings it inside the cell, it's just going to screen it one more time to make sure there's no viruses, parasites, whatever, bacteria, and then release it into the cell. The last one is receptor-mediated endocytosis. It's looking for something in the bloodstream or in outside the cell that's really low concentration, these solutes. So it's going to bind to these receptors. The only thing that could bind to these receptors are these individual things. And then what will happen is it'll bring it inside the cell and then release them inside the cell. And usually these kind of things, they'll go right to the genetic level to do something. How it kind of works is, again, you know, we found something on the outside. We're going to sort of engulf it and then bring it in. It's a way to keep us safe and keep um, the cells safe.